TV KPM. Hai semua, salam sejahtera. Assalamualaikum. Anda sedang menonton Road to Success STPM 2020 di mana hari ini kita nak berkongsi tips dan sedikit petua saat akhir pecutan untuk rakan-rakan yang mengambil kertas peperiksaan biologi khususnya. Sebelum itu, hai Assalamualaikum. Nama saya Nisa, hos anda pada hari ini dan Nisa nak ingatkan agar kekal menjaga SOP kerana kita belum menang dalam melawan COVID-19. Haruslah memakai pelitup muka di mana saja anda berada di tempat awam dan jaga penjarakan sosial sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter. Kerap cuci tangan anda menggunakan air dan sabun serta sanitasi tangan anda apabila perlu. Ini saya sebut tadi berkenaan dengan kertas peperiksaan biologi yang akan berlangsung pada esok hari, 7 hari bulan April 2021 kurang daripada 24 jam rakan-rakan calon-calon STPM 2021, maaf 2020 akan menuduki peperiksaan ini dan mereka ada waktu yang selama satu jam ini untuk mengumpul segala informasi dan tips yang akan kita kongsikan sepanjang satu jam bersiaran. Siapa agaknya guru yang akan bersama-sama dengan kita pada Pada hari ini, jom kita saksikan profil beliau. Mari kawan-kawan kita mempersilakan Dr. Kuan dari SMK Vivi Kananda Kuala Lumpur. Apa khabar Dr? Okey, khabar baik. Macam mana Dr? Esok anak-anak murid akan mengambil peperiksaan ini? Perasaan Dr? Oh, saya lebih gelisah daripada mereka. Yes. Saya, rasa. <laughs> saya rasa macam itulah. Kalau yeah, guru-guru betul. di seluruh Malaysia, kalau anak-anak muridnya yang nak, nak ambil peperiksaan, mereka yang lebih gementar dan juga lebih berdebar. Yeah. Orang kata. Baiklah Dr. Sebelum itu, jom kita ke sana untuk kita sanitasi tangan kita sebelum kita mulakan episod kita pada hari ini. Yeah, Silakan baik. Doktor. Iya. Right. Yeah. Baiklah. Ha, sekiranya anda sudah berada di dalam kawasan yang selamat dan anda perlu membuka topeng muka anda, jangan lupa untuk simpan di bekas yang ditetapkan. Contohnya macam doktor ada poket plastik, macam Nisa ada bekas yang macam ni boleh simpan supaya boleh kekal menjaga kebersihan topeng muka anda dan boleh digunakan kembali sekiranya ia masih bersih jangan melebihi penggunaan selama 8 jam kalau boleh kan doktor bawa topeng muka lebih supaya kita dapat menukar pelitup muka kita apabila ianya sudah pun kotor kita tak naklah pakai pelitup muka yang telah tercemar baiklah ya, hari betul. ini apa yang kita akan kongsikan saya kira pecutan akhir ni doktor mungkin ada sedikit tips apa yang kita nak kongsikan untuk anak-anak murid kita Uh, sebenarnya dalam uh, 24 jam ni yeah. memang susah kita nak apa nak last minute preparation. Mm-hmm. So normally we will uh, we will ask the students mm-hmm. to actually stay properly at home, mm-hmm. do something which is normal, don't do anything abnormal. And also you have to make sure that you can go to uh, SM yeah, tomorrow. Baiklah. Yes. Saya kira uh, rakan-rakan di rumah yang mengambil peperiksaan ini juga uh, telah bersedia di hadapan kaca TV masing-masing untuk mengambil segala input. Orang kata apa, pecutan last minute preparation for them to do uh, within this 24 hours. Yang penting waktu malam nanti tidur awal. Yeah. Tidur awal. You must sleep early so that tomorrow you will get all the energy to actually answer, answer the, the question. Questions. Yes, Baiklah. Sebelum itu kita ada sebuah video khas untuk dipertontonkan jom kita saksikan video pandangan calon berkenaan subjek ini Didik TV KPM So the way I do it is that I always make sure that I have more than one reference book because I think it's extremely important for us to have multiple resources for information and I also think it's very important for us to learn how to utilize the internet to do our own research when we don't understand something so Yeah, that's basically how I study biology. When it comes to examination, I always go for three easy steps. First of all, I will prepare my own notes. Second, I will clarify my all my doubts to teachers. Third, whatever I'm studying in bio, I always relate that and apply it to my surroundings. So this makes me to understand really well and clear. This is how I get well prepared for my bio. So let's see how yours. Didik TV KPM
Baiklah, itu sedikit perkongsian daripada calon-calon uh, STPM 2020 untuk subjek biologi. Uh, Dr. Kwan, uh, one of them said that they uh, he has w more than one reference book to make sure that he understand. And uh, the other friend said that he has three easy steps, which is, I think, it, it is a very uh, interesting uh, steps to do, which is he uh, do his own notes, uh, he will apply in his life, and the other one is, uh, I think he said that he will... Um, do some of the activities to understand more. I think. Uh, do you think that this can be applied to to all other students too? Yes, actually, when you are preparing for mm -hmm. your exams, and also when you are actually uh, what we call it doing your study, mm -hmm. you need to do your own notes. Yes. So when you are doing your own notes, you actually make yourself more aware of what you are studying, mm -hmm. and at the last minute, especially at this moment within yes. 24 hours, yes. actually you have no more time to read your textbook. Mm -hmm. You have no more time for your reference book. Don't think that you can cover everything yeah. in 24 hours. The syllabus is so huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what they need to do is. Uh, during daily uh, learning process mm -hmm. is actually they have to prepare students you have to prepare your own notes mm -hmm. so that when you are doing your revision everything that you understood you already write down in a way that you can help yourself to understand it better after that mm -hmm. yeah that is I would say uh, the students that shows in the video he has already done very good uh, yes. uh, process along the years mm -hmm. to get himself prepared for the exams that he prepared his own notes. That is a very good and very important step. Yes, yeah. and I hope uh, the other students are also prepared for tomorrow's uh, examination and uh, we will uh, take a break for a little bit before we proceed with our lesson for today. Uh, but before that, we will leave you with a um, uh, special speech uh, by our teachers. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you guys after this. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Kembali menonton Road to Success STPM 2020. Sebentar tadi kita telah lihat uh, ucapan khas daripada murid kepada guru-guru bersempena dengan kempen hashtag Terima Kasih Cikgu dengan nyanyian lagu yang merdu dan juga kita turut menerima kad ucapan kreatif daripada murid-murid seluruh Malaysia. Ini saya akan pilih salah satu untuk kita kongsikan bersempena dengan penghargaan kepada guru-guru di Malaysia hashtag Terima Kasih Cikgu yang ini bentuknya seperti jambak bunga menggunakan daun pahal dan kering sebagai bunga sangat-sangat kreatif. Kalau terbalikkan nampak macam bentuk payung pun ada ni. Wah, dan di dalamnya ada ucapan sangat kreatif. Terima kasih cikgu. I love teacher. Ha, terima kasih kepada adik Diksha dari SJKT Rawang. Saya tunjukkan kepada anda semua dan di hadapan ni ah begini. Ya, terima kasih sekali lagi kepada semua yang telah menghantar ucapan juga kad ucapan kepada kami secara digital dan juga secara fizikal bersempena dengan kempen hashtag. Terima kasih Cikgu. Baiklah, kita teruskan pembelajaran kita tetapi sebelum tu, Dr. Uh, I'm not alone. I will definitely bring my friends with me to actually gather all the information and input needed to prepare, last minute prepare for uh, STPM 2020 Biology uh, pada esok hari 7 April. Baiklah, saya ingin mempersilakan rakan-rakan dari SMK VV Kananda Breakfast Kuala Lumpur. Hello, hi semua. Hi. How are you guys? You can actually turn on the mic for a bit. How are you guys doing? Fine. You great? Fine. How about tomorrow? Esok dah nak paper ni macam mana, kawan-kawan? Nervous. Nervous. Uh, are you guys ready? Berpeluh dah. Berpeluh dah. Semua dah berpeluh. <laughs> Tapi esok jangan berpeluh ya tangan. Banyak nak menulis tu esok. Yes. Baiklah. Uh, we will uh, get our friends here to introduce themselves. Let's start with yeah, Ivana. Silakan. Uh, salam sejahtera. Nama saya Ivana James dari SMK uh, Vivekananda. Baik. Terima kasih. Seterusnya, Barat. Silakan. Uh, nama Salam sejahtera. Nama saya Barzan Sarawanan dari Sekolah SMK BB Kananda. Terima kasih, Daniel. Salam sejahtera. Saya Daniel Kuang Jun dari Victoria Institution. Baik. Terima kasih, Joanne. Silakan. Salam sejahtera. Nama saya Joanne dari SMK BB Kananda. Baik. Kita ada siapa tu? Sumina. Silakan. Uh, selamat sejahtera. Uh, nama saya Mariana dari SMK BB Kananda. Ya. Siapa namanya tadi? Maaf, mungkin uh, di situ nama ibunya ya? 
Uh, ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nama siapa tadi? Uh, Mardiana. Mardiana. Ya, yeah, terima kasih. Uh. Seterusnya, yang terakhir sekali, siapa rakan kita? Uh, salam sejahtera. Nama saya Nur Syamla Alia uh, daripada Sekolah Vivekananda. Baik, terima kasih. Jadi di sini kita bukan saja ada rakan-rakan dari SMK Vivekananda, kita ada juga rakan dari Victoria Institution. Ya, yeah, baiklah saya harap anda semua sudah bersedia. Our friends at home, please be ready with your pen and also paper to actually jot down everything uh, Dr. Kwan will share. Ayo Dr. Kwan kita mulakan. Silakan. Okay. Hi students. What do you want to know about your preparation within 24 hours? Hmm. Are you ready? Um, yes, Are you ready? Yes. You are ready, right? So actually, what I want you to know is within 24 hours, what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Normally, within the 24 hours, you cannot prepare a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. So you just act normal. Do not do anything that which is abnormal. All right. So when like anything that abnormal, which you didn't do daily, don't do it. Okay. And at this moment also, you don't go out to lepa go to mama store and so on and so forth so that you can stay at home as much as possible as well as to get all your tools ready what are all the tools that you need your pen pencil eraser ruler and your calculator make sure your calculator is functioning because all this year you have been using the same calculator mm -hmm. and the calculator may have run out of battery and so on and so forth so at the last minute you mm -hmm. don't want it to be malfunction and it jeopardizes your performance because of that. Okay? And most importantly, the last tips, which is you have to make sure that you can mm. go to SM tomorrow. Okay, the final thing we want you to do is go to SM tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Alright? So are you ready to go to SM tomorrow? Yes, of course. Yes. yes. Okay. We can so, see that they are very nervous. Yeah, they are very nervous. But same to me, I'm very nervous for you all as well because yeah. tomorrow I have to be on duty with them. Mm -hmm. When they are having exams, I will be sitting there and see if they are doing things. But I'm doing things at my at my office and I have to be worried about them, how mm -hmm. how their performance and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. How can they, are, are they able to answer the questions and so on and so forth. So equally, teachers are worried every year yes. <laughs> with the students. Okay. All right. Well, we go for session A. Are you all ready? Do you know how to answer yes. session A? All right. So look at question in section A. Basically, question A, there are actually uh, 15 questions there. And each of the questions will base you one mark. So total, there will be 15 marks there. All right. My advice to all of you in the, uh, what we call it, on the Google Meet as well as at home, that you actually spend as least uh, amount of time at, at this section as possible. Hmm. So the maximum that you can spend is only one minute per question. Why? Because it takes you about 15 minutes if you spend uh, one minute per question here. Okay? And the best way for you to actually make sure you can finish it within one minute, uh, one, of the, one of the way that you should do is you cross out the wrong answer. So cross out the wrong answer is one of the easiest method for you to uh, minimize the time that you have to spend in the question. So first of all, let's say we look at this question. The question says that which of the following are true of an ecosystem? So there are four statements over here. So what are you going to look at? There are some key notes here, true uh, statement. Mm -hmm. So you look at the first sentence. Phytoplanktons are producers. Is it true? Yes. Yes. This is a true statement, right? Correct mm -hmm. or not? So if this is a true statement, then you look at here. Okay. okay. How come my answer came out? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you look at the answer here, mm -hmm. then you will know that B and D already out. Mm -hmm. Correct or not? Left view, A and C. So with this one, you eliminate these two, cross out the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is, what actually you did is, you increase the possibility of you getting the correct answers. Mm -hmm. From getting only 25% of correct answers, now you actually increase the percentage of it to get uh, 50%. 50%. Yes. Correct. So then you look at it, eh, two, three, four. 
one pair with two, one pair with three and four. So you look at question number, statement number two, mm -hmm. to make it easy for you to choose the answers. Correct? Not? So when you look at question uh, statement number two, the last consumer obtains the highest energy. Is it a true statement? Is it a true or wrong statement? No. Uh, shaking your head means what? False. It is a false statement, correct? Not? False. So false if, statement, yes. Yeah, if it is a false st statement, that means the question asking for true statement. Mm -hmm. Does mean answer left only? No, uh, sorry. C. C? Yes. So by crossing out the uh, answer, mm -hmm. which is wrong, then mm -hmm. you are actually increasing the possibility mm -hmm. of you getting a correct answer. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is how you actually mm -hmm. reduce the time of you mm -hmm. uh, spending on one question. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the very effective ways that mm -hmm. you people have to learn okay. and apply it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Right. Kwan, I have a question. Yes. I think uh, this situation uh, will be uh, tend to happen to students or I think uh, not only in STPM, maybe in SPM, maybe when I was answering my biology question, it happened. When we see all the statements, uh, one, two, three and four, they might uh, have some confusion uh, whether it's true or not. So they are left with only two answers. So what to do at that very uh, point? <laughs> okay. Um... Very good questions. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's really difficult for you to mm -hmm. actually uh, differentiate mm -hmm. which one is true, which one is false. Yes. But that I would say it depends on your hard work. Mm -hmm. I always say that smart work comes after hard, hard work. work. Without any hard work, you didn't, um, what we call it, equip yourself with mm -hmm. enough of knowledge about biology. Mm -hmm. Then I couldn't help you. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why during the over the years of preparations, mm -hmm. you have uh, about 18 months of preparing for your STPM. Uh, this year, you guys are lucky because you spend longer than that yeah. because of the COVID-19. You have the longest time for preparation. Mm -hmm. Okay, during the preparation time, you have to make sure your uh, knowledge about the facts knowledge is already consolidated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you level up with two statements, which is very difficult for you to choose, it actually very much depends on <laughs> your preparation of your yes. facts. Yeah, All that is right. what I could say. But okay. by doing what I showed you just mm -hmm. now, you increase the possibility of you getting the correct answers. All right, thank you. That is what you. working smart. Yes, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> but you have to come after working hard. Yes. yes. All right. All right, get it? Okay. Yeah. All Very good. Right. All right, we look into the next question, mm -hmm. uh, next tips for you. Mm -hmm. So, you have to be careful of some tricky words. So, like just now, we have true statements. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it comes up with false statement. And sometimes they ask you for accept or mm. not. So, you have to be very careful about the words that is, uh, appeared in the questions mm. so that you choose the answers correctly. All right? And third one is sequencing. So, how can you tackle questions with sequencing. So, I give you a very simple example over here. Let's say the question asks you the following steps are involved in genetic engineering. Rearrange them into the correct sequence. Normally, what the students will do, they will read statement one, two, three, four, five, and then they try to rearrange and yeah. then get the answer one, two, three, which one is number one statement, which one is number two statement, and so on and so yes. forth. And then they compare their sequence with the answer. Mm -hmm. But now I would I'd like you to look at, look at the answer. Mm -hmm. The first sequence in the answer is what? One yeah, and four. Yeah, one and, and four. Correct. Yeah. It gives you only one and four. four. So that means you are actually choosing statement Either one, statement one or either statement four. four as ah. the first step. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you look at the first step, cleave the plasmid and the human DNA with the same restriction enzyme. Mm. Which one is the first step? Sec uh, fourth statement says, isolate the bacteria, plasmid and human DNA. DNA. So obviously, if your factual knowledge is good, you know that isolate the bacteria, plasmid has to is be the, the first one. Step. Okay. So when it is the first one, that means which option you choose? Only B or C. Yes, very good. Yeah, our host can actually <laughs> score biology already tomorrow. We'll give you a paper tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so you left only 
B and C to mm. choose. When you look at B and C, that means you study the answer again. One, three, one, three, the same. Mm -hmm. Left only two and five. Mm. Statement number two and statement number five. So you look at it, statement number two, statement number five. Statement number two is screen for bacteria that contain recombinant DNA. Mm -hmm. Statement number five is transformation. So which one is the last step? Normally to look for the DNA which is already recombined into the bacteria is the last step. We want to screen it, we want to know that that is the bacteria that we want to select for. Mm -hmm. So, which answer? Uh, C. C, correct. You score. <laughs> we will score it together, our friends. Don't worry. So, answer is C. C. So, it makes it very simple for you mm -hmm. when you do your sequencing in such a way. You don't arrange it one by one. Okay, yeah. so uh, statement number one, statement number two, and then so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you look at the answer, and you get the sequencing in mm -hmm. according to the answer. Is it okay to you? All right. I guess right. follow. Can follow. Oh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> anything? Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to ask about session A? Anyone have any question? This is the the final moment yes. or chance for you to ask Doctor yeah. Kwan. Are because you all right with that? With the two tips, I'm sure you can actually increase the possibility mm -hmm. of you getting uh, the correct answers in your uh, paper two, uh, paper section A. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, proceed to section B. Section B actually consists of two questions: mm -hmm. questions 16 and also questions 17. So there are two questions. Total marks of the question is actually 15 marks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it actually separated into seven marks or eight, eight marks, marks per question. All right. So my advice is you spend about 15 minutes for this session, not more than that, and try to do it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have to take note of the instructions or the keywords that are given in this section to indicate or to identify what kind of question, uh, how long your answers you have to put mm -hmm. in, okay, and how, uh, what kind of answers you have to put in and to what length, mm -hmm. all right? Are you following? Fine? Good. They are very focused, Doctor. <laughs> Okay, so the keywords are, there are two types of keywords. Some of the keywords indicating a long answer, a longer mm -hmm. answer. Some may be indicating for a shorter answer. So the keywords that are asking for a longer answer will be define, explain, discuss, give reasons. So these are actually by nature, you know that they want you to explain, you need to explain in a longer sentences. Mm -hmm. okay? Or when they ask you to state or name, then you actually give particular precise answer to what they ask for. Mm -hmm. okay? So this, when you are stating or you are naming, mm -hmm. you actually have to put it in a very accurate manner. Mm -hmm. If it is a name of certain chemical uh, things, if you say carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. you cannot put CO2. You have to put carbon dioxide and spell the carbon dioxide properly. Okay? If anything mistake in your spelling, you, will, you may get penalised and you won't get the marks because this oh. one will be only one, one mark. Mm -hmm. If you have wrong, then that means you are wrong. All right. Another tips for this to know how long you want to answer, it depends on the marks and also on the space provided. In your exam paper, when you get your exam paper, every question for section B, there will be lines in between or, or below the, the questions to indicate actually how long the answers you need to put in. For example, questions like this, define, Define. Define. There are two types of, uh, not two types, two questions which are the same types. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, define ecosystem. If this is two marks and you see that the space given is three lines, sometimes it goes to four lines. Mm -hmm. That means you can explain a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Whereby this one only one mark. And sometimes they won't give you two, what we call it, two lines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will give you only one line. Then it indicates that the answer is actually shorter. So what are you going to do? Normally two marks means two points. 
all right? Mm -hmm. Don't do that uh, more than that. And every time stick to the protocol that one sentence, one point. And the sentence has to be complete sentence. All right, so for example, then you put ecosystem is a system that consists of abiotic and biotic components in a community. And then next point, the biotic components interact with each other and also with the abiotic components in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You get two points in two sentences. All right, whereby when they ask you to define Mendel's second law, and it's given only one mark. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is you just tell us what Mendel's law is without further explanation on that. So you just put just the definition. Yes, that's all. Mm -hmm. Just like this. It will okay. be precise because it's only one mark. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you guys okay? Get it? Good. Uh, double thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> double thumbs up. Okay, so let's say this question. Mm -hmm. This question is actually asking for a short uh, answers, very short and precise answer. Although the what we call it, the question seems long because it has to uh, describe the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you read the whole thing. Okay, the study of a fish population in a pond was carried out. On the first day, a total of 80 fish were caught with a fish net, marked and then released. Then after three days, the fish net was used again. There were 20 marked ones out of a total 90 caught. So name the method used in study, in the study. So name. So when it is named and it is only one mark, okay? You don't need two lines actually. Even the questions are asked you are given you two lines. You answer within the space. You just need one answer there. Mm -hmm. Name the method. Name the method. Capture, mark, recapture. recapture. That's all. Don't put another, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the second question asks you, if a new study is carried out after two months, give a factor. Give a factor. Which would affect the size of the fish population in the pond. You just give a factor. Mm -hmm. If you know that, actually, it's more than one factor mm -hmm. to which will affect the populations of the pond, okay? So you just give one. You can put immigrations, mm -hmm. you can put presence of diseases, you can, uh, you can put uh, predators, presence of predators, mm -hmm. but choose one only because mm -hmm. only one. one mark. The more you put, once you get one wrong, mm -hmm. sorry, you lost your mark. Oh, ah, I was so. about to ask that. What happens when <laughs> we answer more than one? You know, yes. the, the, answer, the, the question only need one, one answer. Yeah, so don't, don't do more than that because mm -hmm. they need one. All right. Any problem with that? So with this, I hope you can actually get the, uh, what we call it, the tips mm -hmm. how to do that. All right, second tips on this section B would be, you have to look out for the depending questions. So that's mean, what kind of question is that? It means that your part B answer depending on your previous question, your part A questions answers. Okay, for example here, there are part one, uh, A1 and A2. So suggest a suitable method which can be used to mark the specimens. Okay, then number two actually depends on the answers that you put at A1. It gives a reason for your answer. Does mean give a reason on this? So, budak budak semua, pandai pandai, pilih apa yang kamu boleh jawab di sini. <laughs> you don't choose an answer at part A, which you don't know the answer at part B. Mm -hmm. So think of an answer which you can give the reason. Mm -hmm. So you can choose, for example, if you put, attach a small metal at the operculum. If you choose this, that means at the answer here, you have to give a very uh, a, a answer which is related to mm -hmm. your previous answer. Okay, so you can say that so that the observer can trace the movement without interruptions to the uh, specimens. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, the life of the fish or whatever it is. Or if you choose another type, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. You can choose another, uh, what we call it, another Answer. examples. Where mm -hmm. Let's say you mark a mark on the tail fin. Mm -hmm. Okay? You mark a mark on the fish tail fin, then you give an answer which is actually related to your answer. 
which mm. is uh, it will be not observant to the predator. Mm. So the predator will not be able to eat it up so that you can study on it later on. So this is basically the sessions that we can um, we, we do for uh, scoring in session B. Mm -hmm. All right. The extra tips for you to actually score in session B is that you have to complete your answer in only one language. One language. Mm -hmm. The questions given to you is one page English, another page uh, BM, mm -hmm. Malay. Mm -hmm. So you choose. You choose either you want to do it in English mm -hmm. or you want to do it in Malay. Mm -hmm. The, what we call it, one of the accepted way is you finish one question in English, you finish another one in BM, still acceptable. Okay. What is never acceptable is within a question you answer in two languages. Mm -hmm. And the worst is within a sentence you in, you, you interacting with two, uh, oh, you put down okay. answers in two languages. That one is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then you have to spell the name properly. Mm -hmm. For section B, you have to put in complete uh, spelling. Mm -hmm. You do not put ATP, but you put adenosine trisphosphate. Mm -hmm. You did not put O2 or CO2, but you put the complete, uh, what we call it, complete uh, words Name. that you use, which is yeah. oxygen, or you put uh, carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. you spell the carbon dioxide completely. All right? Okay. Is it okay to you? Yeah, everybody clear? All yeah. right. Is there any extra Teacher? questions? Yes. yes. Um, I have a question. Yes. yes. Um, what about section C? Do we apply the same principle in answering section B in section C? Okay, to look into question C, mm -hmm. shall we come after the advertisement that we yeah. go for section C? <laughs> I guess they are so uh, excited to, to know, know more, more about the tips, uh, yes. about the section C and, and moving forward from there. But I have a question for the students. Yeah. Ah, can okay. I ask questions? It seems that they are very focused, like, I'm going to tackle this. Yes. Uh, Barat said he prepared his own notes and whatnot. <laughs> How about the other students? Uh, can you share me at least um, one, your, your own tips on how to tackle this subject? And anyone uh, want to? Daniel, can you share with us? What, what do you do for, for the past, I don't know, this one week or two weeks? How will you study? You can turn on your mic, Daniel. Uh, turn on the microphone. Yes. Oh, sorry. All right, it's okay. Uh, so what do I do is, um, I do not study last minute, mm -hmm. and I will memorize whatever I wanted to memorize, mm -hmm. uh, like one month or two months before the exam. Okay. So I actually have time to uh, re-memorize that, to refresh back my own memory, mm -hmm. so that I don't ever forget ever the fact. Yeah. Yes, memorize uh, within one or two months before the examination, not on the night of the examination. <laughs> Do not memorize everything tonight because the students tend to forget uh, if, if they try to memorize everything at the very last minute. Uh, through my experience, mm -hmm. we cannot, uh, at least me, mm -hmm. cannot memorize things at the last minute. Mm -hmm. You can ask my students every time they tell me something last minute, I will forget on the second minute. <laughs> okay? So uh, I would advise that uh, it is true, like what Daniel has said, mm -hmm. you have to prepare uh, every day. Okay? That means if you are in Sam 1 and you are watching this mm -hmm. from now on, or you are Sam 2, Sam 1 st still still not coming in yet for this year. If you are in Sam 2, then you have to actually start doing your own notes. Okay, and actually you need to start looking at more books. Okay, not confine yourself into only one book that you are reading. You have to read more. And nowadays we have a lot of these uh, internet and also Google, Google uh, search and so on. Mm -hmm. You actually can find a lot of facts and you can actually learn from different, different uh, sources and you mm -hmm. combine all the knowledge that you had and put it in your own notes. Mm -hmm. That is the way you need to uh, learn. Mm -hmm. For example, some of the terms, if you are not familiar with, you need to actually get yourself uh, exposed to mm -hmm. more of it. The more you expose yourself to it, the better you learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is what I my advice for you, uh, mm -hmm. for the preparation journey. All right. Yeah. Dr. Kwan, uh, uh, the student have to spell the name properly for, for the answer. They cannot use the, the ATP or O2. Yes. But there are some students 
who tend to spell it wrongly. Uh, how how do you how do you um, share some? Maybe you can share some tips on how to actually remember the name, the full name. I mean, terms in biology or or, or chemistry or physics can be very confusing. Okay. Uh, Bear in mind, mm -hmm. all teachers are very, uh, what we call it, kind, patient, full of passions and compassions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will not penalize you for, let's say, adenosine, trisphosphate, you forgot about one E. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just blind our eyes. Okay, la, da, mm -hmm. but, okay. Mm -hmm. but if you spell cancer, C A N C E R, to become C A N C E L, which is totally giving you a different meaning, mm -hmm. then I'm so sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm so sorry we cannot give you any marks on that. Mm -hmm. So minor, simple, uh, what we call it, spelling, for example, oxygen, suddenly mm -hmm. you put I here. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. still sound mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes we, we will give you mm -hmm. marks. Okay, so uh, that is still acceptable in mm -hmm. that sense. But it is better for you guys to actually prepare and read all the names so you can spell it correctly, yes. confidently. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask, maybe Ivana? <laughs> now, this is just an easy question. Don't worry, I won't be asking about biology <laughs> because I might be <laughs> forget whatever I've learned back way in 2008. Okay, Ivana, can you share with us what is your favourite topics in biology? Um, to say that uh, my favorite topic will be uh, respiration mm -hmm. because uh, it's very interesting. I, uh, it has a lot of, uh, as we go in deeper to learn, there are a lot of names and new processes that we learn. So it's very, how to say, especially learning in semester three is very interesting. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, I, I feel like I like expand my knowledge in many ways, especially learning in biology because biology is one of my favorite subjects. Wow. So learning in like respiration about plants and human bodies is mm -hmm. definitely very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, thank you Ivana for sharing. I guess this is the time where we take a break. Uh, Dr. Kwan, uh, I think I need uh, some water because my I feel very dry <laughs> over here because I'm so excited for them for tomorrow's paper. I'll see you guys after this. Don't go anywhere. Yep. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Kembali menonton Road to Success STPM 2020 for our friends who are sitting biology paper tomorrow on 7 April. Don't forget that this is the last chance for you guys to actually get the, all the tips uh, shared by Dr. Kwan. But before that, we would like to show you guys uh, an e-card we accept from uh, our students all over Malaysia. We can see on the screen. Wow! This is a very beautiful e-card. Uh, I guess the student uh, drew this by him or herself. Hashtag terima kasih cikgu. Kempen ini sebenarnya untuk uh, berkongsi dengan anda semua uh, penghargaan kepada semua guru-guru di Malaysia berkenaan dengan maklumlah suasana pandemik ni masing-masing took a greater challenge uh, to to make sure all of all of our students uh, tetap pada jalan pembelajaran masing-masing. Baiklah, kita akan uh, bersambung kepada tips yang seterusnya. Dr. Kwan will be sharing tips uh, for Section C, how to score Section C. Our friends uh, uh, asked this question just now, so let's see. Yeah, for Section C, mm -hmm. is there is actually uh, three questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, Each question will give you 15 marks. You can choose from uh, the three questions, you answer only two questions. So how can you do the choosing? First of all, you have to actually draft out the answers. Mm -hmm. Look at the three questions as fast as possible, okay, and draft it out. That's why I would advise you in the first two sections, section A and B, you complete it as fast as possible. Then in, you, you save more time for you to do your section C because section C has comprised of actually 30 marks out of your paper. Mm -hmm. All right. So you draft out the answer according to the questions, three questions or so you draft it out and choose, try to choose the best two answers that you can provide. So you can make sure that you maximize the scoring of your uh, section C. So 
the most important thing is after you have choose the questions, you have to organize your answer. Why? Because most of the time that I found, what my student did is their answer is everywhere, mm -hmm. which I don't know where to find <laughs> the answers. <laughs> so you have to organize your answer so that it makes it like a story which people would like to learn and which people would like to read further on. So for example, we how to organize your answer. So let's say this question. State the differences between continuous and discontinuous variation. Mm -hmm. So you organize it. First method, I would say you organize it by putting one, two, three, four, like that. Okay? You put you organize your statement precisely into uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. This one is not point form. This one is organizing your answers. Points form is when you give your answer in complete sentence. The sentence is not complete. Okay? If you put it in a complete sentence, it is not a point form. You are actually arranging your answers and organizing your answers for better reading as well as for yourself, mm -hmm. better, uh, what we call it, organizing of your mind and so on and so forth. So you have to complete it. Continuous variation is quantitative, whereby this continuous variation is qualitative. Mm -hmm. Comparing apple to apple, mm -hmm. one to one. Yeah. Continuous variation is affected by environmental factors, then this continuous is not affected. Straight away, this is the difference. Okay. You cannot put the answers, for example, continuous variation is quantitative and uh, affected by environmental factors. Mm -hmm. Then second sentence, you put this continuous variation is quantitative and it is not affected by environmental factors. That mm -hmm. is not differences because you didn't show any mm -hmm. comparison between the two. You are just showing the characteristic of continuous variation mm -hmm. and discontinuous variation. Mm -hmm. So Do bear in mind. Yeah, Dr. Kwan, I guess our friend over here have a question to ask. Bayat, yes. What do you want to ask? Uh, teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, so can I answer the question by writing all about the continuous variation, then I write about the discontinuous variation. Can I? Yeah, that's why just now I just said mm -hmm. that you cannot do that. Okay? Mm, okay, you have to make sure you compare it, uh, apple to apple. So if you just put down what continuous variation is and what discontinuous uh, variation is, that is you are stating the uh, characteristic of the mm -hmm. two. You are not actually doing the differences. That means you are not actually comparing the, uh, the two things that the questions ask you to compare. All right? This is the first method that I shows you. That means you list it down in sentences and you have to make sure the sentences is actually comparing apple to apple. All right? Second method that I'm showing you to answer this kind of question is by putting it into table. Putting it into table doesn't mean that you can put it in point form. Mm -hmm. Still have to have complete sentences. Okay? So you separate your tables into continuous variable and then this continuous variable. Yeah. To put it into a table like this is just for you to, what we call it, to organize your answer mm -hmm. better. Because you need to fill this up and fill this up. You won't get missed. Mm -hmm. Okay, you won't miss out any of the points. So still the same thing, continuous variable, uh, uh, variation, sorry, <laughs> this is a wrong. Mm -hmm. Continuous variation, variation is quantitative. And then continue, this continuous variation, uh, variation so, sorry, uh, is qualitative mm -hmm. all right so then you can continue it is affected by environmental factors then it is not affected by environmental factors yes. so you still need to put it into a complete sentence mm -hmm. never have any sentences which is incomplete mm -hmm. that is what the key things that you have to know by answering the questions most importantly why you want to do this is mm -hmm. for you to organize your answer in a more presentable manner mm -hmm. easy for you to look at easy for the examiners to mark it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. For, let's say, another type of uh, questions, describe how the size of the populations of mouse deer in a tropical rainforest can be estimated. So to answer these kinds of questions, I would say you can always choose to 
use diagrams to help you in organizing your answer. Mm -hmm. Always try to use diagram to organize your answer. Why? Because if you do not know how to actually put it in a sequence to explain how the things is, you refer back to your diagram. But always bear in mind the diagram alone, if you put in the diagram alone, mm -hmm. you will get zero marks because you have to write it down. Yes. Okay, by diagram alone, you, uh, it cannot be your answer alone. Okay, so for example, what you need to do, the method is actually, the sequence is you catch, catch it, you mark it, mm. you release it, and then you recapture it. This mm -hmm. is your steps. Okay, so now you put all the steps that you have already identified in a flow chart like this, okay, what you need to do is you just have to put this, uh, what we call it, the things that you identify in the flow chart or the flow map mm -hmm. into sentences. So you organize or you write the sentences according to what you have put in in the diagram. So for example, you put it in this way. So first of all, they ask you how it is, so you have to choose a method. So the populations of mouse deer in the tropical rainforest can be estimated by using state the method. Mm -hmm. Capture, mark, and recapture mm -hmm. method. Then you start with the first step. Capture. Explain it step by step. First of all, traps are set at the respective location to capture the animal. Mm -hmm. Once the animals are captured, what you do? Mm -hmm. Mark it. So you follow step by step so that your answer is organized, your flow of thought is organized. Mm -hmm. When the reader read your products of your writing, mm -hmm. they are organized as well. Mm -hmm. They can follow the flow. Okay? So once the animals are captured, they are marked. Then, but uh, with non-toxic and uh, insoluble ink on their feet. So what they are doing is you can put in more information at the second step. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. How you mark it? How you mark it? You are using uh, non-toxic ink mm -hmm. and also insoluble ink. You can further describe it as well. You can further tell why you want to use a non-toxic ink and why you want to use insoluble ink. Mm -hmm. So you add in more points here. After that, you will not forget because you, you will not forget what step, uh, the next step is what? Uh, yeah, because can you can refer, refer back to the yeah. flowchart and you know the following step will be release it. Mm -hmm. So you have said, finally, uh, oh, sorry, after marking the animals, then we have to release the animal back to the environment, mm -hmm. to the community to mingle around. Then, why? You have to, after a few, few months or few weeks, you have to recapture it for the second time. So mm -hmm. you follow it in a sequence. Yes, Baratan, any questions? <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, um, like, so let's see, uh, don't, um, by doing like this, by uh, drawing like this uh, diagram, don't we take uh, too, uh, too long by finishing the essay? Because teachers say that uh, they won't give uh, marks for the diagram, so they will only need words. So won't they take uh, too long to doing the diagram and mm. never put? Okay, mm. thank you for the questions. First of all, I have to say that uh, I'm not your art teacher. We are doing biology diagram. <laughs> so do it as simple as possible. So mm. that's why I'm not giving you a Picasso Mm -hmm. kind of products here. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you a box and, a, and, a, and mm -hmm. a, what we call it and the words there. So mm -hmm. make the diagram as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you need to draw a cell or something like that, how to make your drawing fast is you practice it daily. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why during lessons, I always ask you all to draw the diagram. When you are explaining and you are doing your notes and you are actually drawing the diagram a few times, when come to exams, you are actually able to uh, draw the things very fast. Okay? So that is how you prepare yourself. All right. Instead of doing it in paragraph like this, there is another way to organize your answer. Yeah. You organize it into sentences with... Uh, numbers or you put just put a dash yeah. dash dash mm -hmm. like that also can. I'm exactly changing this uh, what we call it the, the text. This mm -hmm. sentence, all the sentences over here, mm -hmm. the text there, into this. So you still do the same thing, but you organize it one point mm -hmm. at one time. So this is the way where you can actually 
organize your answer and organize your thought, always mm -hmm. remember to read back your own writing. Mm -hmm. When you read back your own writing, you understood it. I guarantee you 90% the examiners also understand what you are writing. Mm -hmm. But when you read your text and you don't understand it, I'm so sorry, most of the time the examiner also won't understand what you want to write. Mm -hmm. So that is the way that you uh, re-look into it. Is there any problem? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Yeah? All right. All right. So the tips that you need to actually master for section C is that mm -hmm. you have to organize your answer. Make it easy to read. Mm -hmm. Try to make the answers presentable and write it properly mm -hmm. so that the examiners can follow the thought of your mind, mm -hmm. then they can actually reasonize how you reasonize the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a very important thing. Use okay. diagram to help you if you need to. If the question says that explain with diagram, then you must have a diagram. Yes. If the questions don't say that, that's mean you can use the diagram to help you, but the diagram will not give you marks. Mm -hmm. You cannot make the diagram as the answer. You can put the diagram there to help you to organize your answer. Okay, write a complete story as if your teacher don't understand anything, don't know anything. <laughs> yes, because we want to know what you want, to, you, you know. Mm. If you assume that I know and you don't put it in, I'm so sorry because we don't know that you know. Okay, okay. so spend not more than 20 minutes per, per question. question. Write fast, but neatly. Sorry for those who have bad handwriting. Please learn how to write properly. <laughs> okay. Um, you have to write fast and try to, what we call it, earn some time from section A and B so that you can spend more time in organizing your section C. Mm -hmm. All right? So I think that is what I need to talk to you mm -hmm. for section C. Anything else you want to ask? Yes. Yes, Joanne. Joanne? Uh, is there any advice for us to score well in biology paper? Oh, everyone definitely yeah, wants definitely. an A plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as I say, at the very last moment like this, mm -hmm. just within 24 hours, the most important thing is you make sure you can go to school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sure that, what we call it, almost 99.9% mm -hmm. is already done because you have already prepared more than a year for mm -hmm. your exams. That is where you are. All right. So this is the 24 hours what you need to do. If you have already done your notes, that is an advantage mm -hmm. of you. Read your notes. Just flip through, get all the points or some of the images imprinted and refresh your memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then if you really got extra time and you don't want to waste your time by sitting down and relaxing and so on, just relax your mind because the more you relax, the more you get anxious. Mm -hmm. Then try to read the questions, get some of the past year questions, as well as get some of the, what we call it, the, a lot of publishers actually uh, come up with a lot of uh, sample questions. Mm -hmm. uh, then you check the answer. Read the questions, read the answers. Read the questions, read the answers. See how the answers is presented. Okay? And then, most importantly, sleep, sleep early, early. <laughs> eat properly. Okay? Just do whatever you do normally. Mm -hmm. Okay? Get enough of sleep, wake up fresh tomorrow, and, and then go, go for exams. For exams. Yes. Go earlier to school. If mm -hmm. exams start at 11, right, tomorrow, mm -hmm. go to school at least by 10 o'clock. Get mm -hmm. yourself settled down, quiet down, relax, and just if you don't want to talk to your friends, mm -hmm. don't bother about your friends. Just sit mm -hmm. there and then be yourself and quiet and make sure all your tools are with you. Pen, pencil, eraser, ruler, yes. calculator that you need. You are not allowed to use uh, correcting tapes and uh, liquid paper or something like that, correcting okay. liquid. So you don't bring that one, it's fine. But make mm -hmm. sure your pen, pencil, erasers is more than mm -hmm. one. Make sure you prepare for that. All right. Dr. Kwan, uh, as the students are not allowed to bring any liquid papers, uh, if they want to cancel the, the answer that they don't want, they can just cross Yeah, out. just cancel like this. Cancel the question. I can cancel in one, one line enough, yeah? One line. Don't cancel like this. <laughs> <laughs> don't All cancel like right. that. All yeah. right. Okay. Students, do you have any one last question for Dr. Kwan? You guys are going to sleep for this exam <laughs> less than 24 hours. Everything is okay? I guess they are very much ready. Double thumbs up if you guys are so ready for the 
to, uh, for the paper tomorrow. Double thumbs up. All right. So uh, as we um, uh, with uh, Dr. Kwan uh, today, Dr. Kwan has shared uh, of what you should do during this last 24 hours. Make sure you have everything needed for the examination ready and spend time answering the questions wisely. Uh, you do yes. you do not want to spend too much time on one question, but then you will have less time for the, the the more important question that will give you more marks so we don't want that to happen so be ready dan saya ucapkan selamat maju jaya buat rakan-rakan bukan setakat di rakan-rakan di studio bersama-sama kita daripada SMK Vivekananda dan juga Victoria Institution juga kepada semua calon-calon STPM 2020 yang akan menduduki kertas biologi pada esok pagi uh, iaitu 11 pagi ya Dr. Kuan yes. diharapkan apa yang kita kongsikan hari ini telah anda catat dan anda telah bersedia secara mental dan fizikal untuk hadapi kertas peperiksaan ini baiklah kita ingin ucapkan terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada Dr. Kuan thank, thank you so much for today's sharing I think I learn a lot even though I'm not the one who's taking the paper tomorrow but it feels like I'm with them so yeah. my 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 spirit my my semangat will always be, be with you guys so I wish you guys all the best tomorrow okay all right so terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada semua yang menonton jangan ke mana teruskan menonton Didik TV KPM saya ni sakit kita jumpa lagi assalamualaikum bye 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 kawan-kawan semua bye Didik TV KPM Salam sejahtera. Nama saya Kartiweni Manikam, ibu kepada Baradan Sarawanan. Calon STPM 2021 dari Sekolah SMK Vivekananda Brickfield. Saya berharap supaya Baradan dan rakan-rakannya diberi kesihatan yang baik sepanjang peperiksaan STPM dan dapat menjawab soalan dengan lancar. Semoga anak-anak semua diberi kejayaan yang cemerlang. Selamat maju jaya. Assalamualaikum, saya Nuriha binti Mahmud, ibu kepada Nur Syamila Alia, calo FTPM 2020 dari Sekolah Bibi Kananda. Saya berharap anak-anak dikurniakan kesihatan baik yang berterusan dan diselamatkan perjalanan mereka ke Dewan Perperiksaan serta dilindungi dari halangan dan ritingan. Semoga anak-anak semua diberi kejayaan yang semalam.